In the Khilaf of Umar, we mentioned that the Muslimin were able to open Alexandria and Amr ibn al-As was placed as the governor of Egypt. During the time of Uthman ibn Affan, Amr ibn al-As was taken out or away from the governorship of Egypt and Uthman placed Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh. Now in Al-Iskandariya, the people of Iskandariya and the Byzantines, they kept on infiltrating, trying to get the people of Iskandariya of Alexandria to rebel against the Muslimin. Until they were able to gather numbers in Alexandria to go against the Muslimin and they rebelled against the Muslimin, it began in Alexandria and it continued forth until the borders or the banks of the Nile River. Now as they were rebelling and the Byzantine leaders had sent one of their main commanders whose name was Manuel. Now the people of the Muslimin in Egypt at that time they sent a request to Uthman ibn Affan. They said, oh Uthman, reinstate Amr ibn al-As as governor, as leader of Egypt, for he is more knowledgeable, he is more, has more experience in the land of Egypt in fighting against the Byzantines in Egypt more than Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh. So Uthman radiallahu anhu accepted the request of the Muslimin in Egypt and Amr ibn al-As was reinstated as the governor and the commanding leader of the forces in Egypt. Now Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he remained far from Alexandria. And he didn't attack them. He said, let them come to us. Now when the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they questioned what he was doing. He said, let them come to us. Let the people of Egypt see what the Byzantines do. Because every city that they would enter, they would loot it. They would destroy it. They would take prisoners, they'll take the females, they'll take their wealth, and then they'll continue. He said, let the people of Egypt see the true colors of the Byzantines, and then they will come and tell us to come to them. So he had uh, uh, placed his forces outside of Alexandria, waiting for them to come to him. And as he had said, and what he had done came to an effect where every city that they would go through, they would destroy it. So when they reached the Muslim armies, the Muslim armies were waiting for them and the Egyptians behind them were waiting for the Muslimin to be victorious so that they can welcome in the Muslimin. Now the two armies faced in the area or in the place called Naqyuls, which is on the borders of or on the banks of the Nile River. And the battle took place and Amr ibn al-As and the Muslimin were able to destroy the armies of the Byzantines and make them retreat back to Alexandria. Now as the Muslimin are following them to Alexandria, the Egyptians that were attacked by the Byzantines were rebuilding the streets, rebuilding the bridges for the Muslimin. And they were calling upon the Muslimin to get rid of the Byzantines for them. Now when they reached Alexandria, the Byzantines had fortified themselves in there. Amr ibn al-As, he had placed the catapults and began to embark on the city of Alexandria until he had destroyed the majority of the fortress and was able to enter into Alexandria and continued until he reached the middle of the city of Alexandria. And that's where he stopped and that the place in which he stopped, he built a masjid called Masjid al-Rahmah. And the remainder of the Byzantines had fled by sea and the remainder of the fortress was destroyed and the peace and tranquility returned to Alexandria and then the leader or the head of the Coptic uh, Christians in Alexandria returned to Alexandria seeking the aid and the help of the Muslimin and requested that they allow the Coptics to return to Alexandria and because they, they weren't the ones who broke the treaty. They didn't break the treaty, they fled when the Byzantine army had come, returned to them the lands that were taken, and Amr ibn al-As, he agreed with them. Until the last days of the Islamic Khilafah, Alexandria, Al-Iskandariya, and the different lands of Egypt remain under the control of the Muslimin. Egypt became the center of knowledge, the center of benefits for the Muslimin, 
and one of the first universities that was ever built was built in Egypt which is still standing till today which is Al-Azhar the Azhar University Alexandria became one of the strongholds of the Muslimin and the Muslim army at that time and especially one of the military points of the Islamic fleet which was divided between Egypt and the other center was on the borders or on the shores of what is known today as Lebanon and one of the main areas and cities in which the ships would be built and which the ships would be taken care of was in in the city of Tripoli and the Muslim army was able to regain that strength to expand the military frontier in which the Muslimin were able to expand their da'wah. The Muslimin at the time of Amr ibn al-As before he was taken away from his position as governor and it was given to Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, the Muslimin had began to enter to the lands of northern Africa. They had already entered into Libya, taken uh, uh, Barqa and so forth and those areas in northern Libya. The Muslimin adventured and went into the southern parts of Africa which is to the south of Egypt which is called as Bilad al -Nawba. and this was an area or this was a place in which the Muslimin began to spread but when they faced the army of these people they faced an army with capabilities that the Muslimin were not used to so the Muslimin had encountered great loss in the battles that they took place in Bilad al -Nawba, in the lands of Nubia as they call it and when this took place, the Muslimin had to make a peace treaty with these people. And this peace treaty in itself opened the doors for the da'wah. And that they would allow the Muslimin to enter and the Muslimin would allow them to enter their lands. And they would trade with one another. And this opened doors for da'wah until it was mentioned that years after it, the people began to enter into Islam. And the majority of those lands entered into Islam due to that peace treaty and due to the dealings with the Muslimin and how the Muslimin would deal with them. Now Amr ibn al-As and Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, he continued his march on the northern shores of Africa and he continued forward in opening the lands until he reached an area called Subaytila which is in the Moroccan Tunisian parts of northern Africa. When they reached there, they encountered the king of northern Africa, which was called Jarjis. And this king had with him, as it was estimated by the historians, over a hundred thousand soldiers. And the Muslimin at that time were between 20,000 and 30,000. And the battle took place in the 31st, 32nd year after the Hijrah of the Prophet Wasallam. And the Muslimin were fighting fiercely. And the battle was so fierce that the victory was not given until reinforcements arrived under the leadership of the famous companion, young companion, Abdullah ibn Zubair. Through his bravery, the Muslimin were granted victory over the king of northern Africa. And it is mentioned that Abdullah ibn Zubair, this was the first act and the first sign of his bravery. He wasn't known prior to that as much. When he entered into the battlefield, and it was said that he went to the commander Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, and he said to him, send with me some men, and I am going to infiltrate the army until he reached the king who was on his horse, shading him with feathers. And then when he saw Abdullah coming, he thought it was a messenger coming and approaching him. But when he saw Abdullah with his sword, he tried to run away, and Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu was able to catch him and finish him. And that was the end of the battle of Northern Africa in which the Muslimin had attained the leadership and the land and had gained the position in Northern Africa with the aid of Abdullah ibn Zubair and became famous after the battle of Northern Africa. And then he continued his path in that way radiallahu anhu. Now the Mediterranean Sea at that time was known as Bahr al-Rum the Sea of the Romans. Why? Because of their stronghold and because of their large fleet that they had in the Mediterranean Sea, which was estimated to be over a thousand ships. Now with the Muslim army and with the Muslimin expanding their land and taking Asham, taking Syria and Lebanon and the shores 
that were in Syria and Lebanon and then Palestine and now Alexandria, the Muslim fleet became a threat to the Roman fleet and to the Byzantine fleet. The son of Heracl, Constantine ibn Heracl, he gathered the largest fleet that he had in the Mediterranean Sea to attack the Muslimin and to destroy the Muslim fleet. And it was estimated between 500 to 1,000 ships were sent under the order of Constantine. Now when the word reached to Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, that the Roman fleet and the Byzantine fleet was gathering to attack the Muslimin, Uthman radiallahu anhu sent orders for the Islamic fleet in Asham to join with the Islamic fleet in Alexandria. And what will happen between the Byzantine army and the Muslim army between their fleets is the famous and the first battle that took place on the sea by, with the Muslimin, which is called that Sawari, the battle of the masts. The Muslimin at that time, as we said prior to this, had no experience in naval warfare, had no experience in fighting on ships and so forth. They were people of the land. But because the Muslimin, when they do something, they do it to perfection, you find that they were the pioneers and the leaders in that. That's why in the years after that, they were the ones who perfected the use of the compass. They were the ones who perfected the geography and the fleets that they had done, the ships that they had done. They were the ones who perfected this. And always the Muslimin, that's how they are. So that al Sawari, it gave us an insight into the Muslimin and what they are capable of doing. So the battle of that al Sawari took place on the shores of Alexandria, the shores of the Mediterranean Sea, between the fleet of the Muslimin and between the fleet of the Byzantine army, which is under the leadership of Constantine himself the son of Heracl. And when they had come to attack the Muslimin, the Muslimin had 200 ships, the ships and the fleet of the Byzantines was, as we said, estimated. Some historians say 500, some historians say 700, some historians reach it up to 1,000. So now the Muslimin are facing at least double or triple their numbers. So now the Muslimin under the leadership of, of Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, radiallahu anhu, who was getting to learn and understand and perfecting the art of naval warfare. And during that time when the battle had taken place, the Muslim army and the, and the army of the Byzantines, they sent messengers back and forward. So Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, he wanted to try to bring the Byzantine army to shore. He said, we'll fight on shore and we'll fight face to face and whoever wins, wins. So Constantine, he sends back to Abdullah ibn Abi Sa'i, he says, no, the sea is between us. We'll stay and we'll fight on the sea. So Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, he says, okay. And then he goes back to his companions, he goes back to his army. He says, what do you say? They remain silent. He asked again, they remain silent. He asked the third time, advise me what you want to do. So one of the soldiers, he stands up and he says, Oh, Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, he says, and how many times has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given victory to a small group when it is faced with a what? With a much larger group. And that night, the wind was so fierce that no one was able to do anything. So an agreement was made that this night we will be safe and will be given peace. No one will attack the other person. And the historians, they mention that the Muslimin on that night, the recitation of the Quran, the praying in tahajjud, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would made such a noise that the sea was buzzing from the recitation of the Quran. And the army of the Byzantines was music, alcohol, and so forth. So Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh now, he makes a plan, as mentioned by the historians. The beginning of the war or the beginning of the fight begins with arrows and so forth between the ships. When the arrows run out, they begin, as they mentioned, with the rocks and whatever they have. When that runs out, now the Muslimin, 
Abdullah ibn Abi Sarah had appointed sort of an elite group of soldiers to go onto the ships and to tie them with ropes and to make the battle on the sea as if it's on land. So now you have 200, 400, 500, 600 ships all connected with each other. And the battle begins and the fighting begins between the Muslimin and between the Byzantines. And this is where the Muslimin have the upper hand. And this is where the Muslimin show their fierceness and show that they have no fear and that they are willing to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now the battle goes and Abdullah ibn Abi Salih is injured and he's nearly killed during that battle and the fleet of the Byzantines is nearly destroyed in its entirety and Constantine, the leader of the Byzantines is also injured and he is able to flee and he is able to leave and it was said that the sea had turned red on that day. The Muslimin had lost many numbers and a great number and also the Byzantine army had great loss. So from both sides, but by the, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the victory was given to the Muslimin. But they weren't able to take as prisoner Constantine. He had run away. But subhanAllah, the person, their fate, they can't run away from their fate. He had run away to an island called Suqilya, which is Sicily, which is known as the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. And news had reached there that or what had happened to the fleet of the Byzantines. When he reached there, the people of Sicily saw him running away and running away from the battlefield, running away from his obligations. So they took him and they killed him. And the Muslimin didn't have to yani, take care of him or do anything to him. After the battle of that was Sawari, now the Muslimin have taken control of the Mediterranean Sea and it remained under their control for centuries. So this was the conquest that took place during the time of Uthman radiallahu anhu. We mentioned in the east, we mentioned in Asham, and we mentioned by sea, and that was during the Khilaf and during the time of Uthman. Now one of the main virtues of Uthman radiallahu anhu that all the Sahaba and all the Muslimin are agreed upon is that Uthman radiallahu anhu was the one who gathered the Muslimin on one Mus'haf.